Well, my talk is about pathfinding because we struggled with that in our game, and I thought maybe I can give someone a hint in the right direction if they're struggling with it too. So who am I? Uh, my name is Niels Older Tim. You might know me, probably not, by the alias of Fersen. Uh, I studied computer science and maths. I worked at Fraunhofer for a while. And I just like to take things apart and see how they work, and then try to put them back together, and then nothing works anymore. And I program uh, the game Star Fallen, which you might have seen around, hopefully. If not, then look at it sometime after my talk. Um, so why pathlining? Mostly to avoid zombie syndrome, because we've all seen games where enemies just run into walls and like try to run towards you and then stop at the pit and just go like, oh, he's over there and I can't go like this. That would be too much work. So that is something we want to avoid. On, like, as a second thing, which is really useful, is pathfinding and implementing it gives you a lot of useful tools for what you might want to do with AI. Like, it's really good to figure out the actual distance you would have to walk to get to a place rather than just like taking the distance by air. Um, so we can probably all agree that pathfinding is a good thing to have. And then the question is, what options do I have? Well, generally, it comes down to these two things. One is graph search, and the other is obstacle avoidance, which, granted, isn't really pathfinding, but it can fulfill some of the purposes of it. Um, so I'll cover obstacle avoidance first. Basically, you end up with steering behavior or correcting if you run into something. So steering behavior basically works by, will I run into something if I keep on going forward? If so evade to the left or the right, depending on which is more beneficial. That works really well for space games, for example. Like if there's a lot of open space and the obstacles are few and far between, then it's really easy to just like steer around it and still be more or less on the right path. Graph search is more useful for strategy games or games with complicated or big geometry in order to avoid them. Uh, so you end up with Dijkstra or A star or B star or any other graph search algorithm, depending on what you need. But their performance and their usefulness depends highly on the graph you're picking to represent your level. So how to graph? Uh, first, we have node graphs. The, the grid, everyone that has ever programmed a game with pathfinding has implemented the grid because it's really simple to build. Uh, you can see, oh god, I hope this is the right button. Yes. Uh, you can see like equidistant nodes in the grid and it's really easy to figure out which ones should be connected because it's always just the neighbors. And then you end up with a path in the end. But you can see it's a lot of nodes in this graph. So that's kind of, eh. But it's really easy to implement if you have a game that doesn't have really big levels. It's definitely the way to go if you don't want to work on this too much. The next option you have is basically waypoints or the edge connections. You kind of do edge connections if you do procedural generation because like if you put in a node on the edge of like on every edge of every object, then you're guaranteed you can walk there. Um, you can see there's a lot more connections here than in the grid. And it's kind of tricky to figure out which ones you should actually connect so you don't end up with like a mess like this. Um, but it has much fewer nodes. Like if you look at this, this is a more complicated level than before. <coughs> than before, but you end up with much fewer nodes. So that improves performance by quite a bit. And then the last option is nav meshes, which are kind of the industry standard, as far as I know. And they're pretty complicated to build if you want to do them like superbly right. And they have some benefits. Like they're very few nodes, because uh, nodes in this case aren't just like dots somewhere. They are actually geometry that describes where you can walk. And well, as soon as you find like that patch of geometry where you can walk, you can walk freely inside that. So that saves a lot of space. Um, figuring out connections is also relatively easy because you always just connect to your neighbors immediately. There are no huge gaps between things because everything is directly connected. And it can give you additional information, like how much space you have in which direction, like you can have enemies that stay a certain distance away from walls because, I don't know, they might have to walk back and charge at you or something. So you can get some benefit for your game design or for your AI behavior from that. I'm going way too quickly. I'm making up some time here. 
So, what is our game where we were struggling with this? Uh, and what traits does it have? Our game is called Starfallen, which was there in text before I sent it to our artist. Okay. Uh, our game is called Starfall, and remember this. It's a, it's a good game. You should buy it when we release it eventually. And uh, our game is open world. We procedurally generate the environment, and we focus on story and exploration, and we pre-build things by hand in a map editor. So like, it's not just procedurally generated, because well, that can also lead to issues for us. So what's the problem? Mainly the procedural generation. Uh, we don't know where things will be. We don't know what things will be where, and just we don't know a lot of things beforehand, really, because it all just happens when you play. So we have to figure out where you can walk while the game is running without the game freezing up, because we also try to not like have you walk to somewhere and then it's like, wait, loading, like in Half-Life 2. That was bad. Oh, man. And <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I love you, Valve. Please, please hire me. And uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, the, the last issue we have is because we pre-built things and we have no, no like, concept of which way the player will walk, we have to be able to link up things that might already exist when something is procedurally generated next to it. And that's kind of tricky. And we have to do it fast enough that we're not going to freeze up the game for like more than 16 milliseconds so we can keep our precious 60 frames per second. So what are our options again? Um, we can, well, we have complicated pre-built levels, so we can't do the obstacle avoidance approach. Because if there's a large wall, it's not good enough to go, oh, I can evade this large wall to the left and then run into it slightly later. That's not going to work. So we are left with graph search algorithms for pathfinding, basically. So then the question is, what kind of graph do we want? I like this slide. Just because of the smiley face. Uh, but yeah, it's not really smiling. That's fair enough. Um, so which type of graph do we want to build? Grid, easy to compute, expensive to query. Dynamic waypoints, it's easy to find the nodes. Wait, OK. That totally didn't say easy to find connections. That is supposed to say it's difficult to find connections. Because that is, that is the issue with that. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. It's. It's easy to query. We don't have many nodes, so it's relatively fast to find a path. But it's difficult to figure out which nodes we're supposed to connect. If I go back a lot of slides, like this, like you really don't want to end up with a mess like this. So ideally, you find some way to reduce which like, nodes you want to connect. But that is really tricky, especially when you're like dynamically generating it. So then the last option is nav meshes. Once again, everyone loves nav meshes. They should. Love nav meshes. And what's complicated about this is figuring out the polygons. Like if you want to do proper nav meshes, you need to like you need to build the geometry so you get like perfectly fitting polygons with a maximum of n edges and otherwise you subdivide them and it's becoming really complicated so I will stop there. Um, but connecting things is easy because you just connect what's next to it. And it queries the fastest because you end up with the fewest nodes. And it has some additional benefits as well, like knowing distance to the nearest wall or something. So we obviously went with nav meshes because nav meshes are great. And well, it's still tricky because we can't build perfect polygons. So we're kind of trying to find a Goldilocks solution that's kind of like nav meshes, but not quite. So we're using features that the engine has to do anyway. I don't know if you can see it. There's like a, a red border here around the objects. So in yellow, you see the actual bounding box. Oh, well, the actual collision polygon we used to figure out if you're running into it. And the red thing is the bounding box, which we use for the collision broad phase. But that's not super important. The, the important thing is I already know this. Like, I already know this red, tri uh, red rectangle. That's, like, I know if I walk there, it's dangerous because I might collide. and We don't like colliding. So we're saving us the cost of constructing polygons and just pick rectangles. But now we end up with, like, we know a lot of rectangles where we can't walk, which is the exact opposite of what we want. 
So we take like a really large rectangle, just imagine a rectangle around this, really large one, and then we cut out all the red rectangles. And another benefit of this is because our world is generated in chunks, we can like just pick the big rectangle to be exactly one chunk size. So we can like we get a nice border that's defined and the engine loads the whole chunk anyway. And this is how it looks in the end. Um, so you can see the border of the chunk I've like generated a nav mesh for. And you can see like, I don't want to walk here. I don't want to walk here. Maybe you don't see that because I haven't explained what things mean. Um, so the, the white rectangles with a cross through them describe where you can walk, which is unintuitive. But if I like mark them with empty rectangles, you kind of end up with a situation where you have like a rectangle, you can walk here and here and here, and then there's an empty rectangle where it looks like you can walk in the middle. So where there's no cross, you can't walk, which is weird. But just give that to me, OK? Um, the red line here is just a, a path I've generated. It goes from here to somewhere there. And you can see it finds its way like through the tiny gaps. And like it works. I, I implemented working pathfinding, and now I'm giving a talk about it. Um, but the, the important bit is you can see I have a lot more rectangles than I would have if this was like optimal, uh, like an optimal nav mesh. But I can make it fast enough that you don't notice it when the game is running. Like if I load a new sector or like a new chunk, you won't see that I generate a nav mesh dynamically at runtime. And I link these up at the edges because I have well-defined edges. Like I just have to link up the big rectangle so that it works in the end. And that is my relatively short talk, I feel, about how we solved our navigation problems. Does, if anyone has questions, I think I have a lot of time left. OK, I have some time. OK. Oh, oh nice. Hello, hello. Uh, so um, by using the rectangles or the bounding boxes of the objects, yes. wasn't this leading to like um, rather restrictive usage of the objects? Like having an object where there's a corridor inside the mesh wouldn't be possible, right? Because the rectangle yes, was doing this. So you had to split up the objects again? Yeah, you get aliasing, like, aliasing issues, right? Um, the the easy solution is to just subdivide things further. Mm -hmm. Like instead of having a large wall, you make it like four smaller walls that all line up correctly, mm -hmm. and that solves the problem. Um, it kind of worked to our benefit in the game because you can only move like you can't attack diagonally. You can only attack up, down, left, right. So it kind of forces us to design levels in a way that like you can attack enemies more easily because you don't get large diagonals just because I'm a bad programmer. I have a follow-up to this one. So I have to admit, I have not played the game. I just saw it a couple of times. Yeah. It looks really amazing. Um, Thank you. But the thing is, it's it's mostly it's natural environments, right? So it's does, does this approach work better in like um, natural environments? Um, or would it also be suitable for like an industrial, more archi architecture-crowded areas? We We have a large dungeon right now that I used to test this in. And it kind of works better because you get like, m like you get shapes that match uh, rectangles more closely. If you have like a, something really industrial, right? You get sharper edges on things. For like natural geometry, I feel like you get bigger issues with uh, the bounding box not matching the actual collision geometry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you have collision col um, geometry that moves around? And do you have to recompute the navigation mesh on runtime? Um, I'm not recomputing it in runtime. I'm using steering behavior to avoid these kind, of uh, these kind of problems. And then if I still can find a path afterwards, I, re I recalculate and try to steer around the like, moving object again. And do I have another question? Did you mention how you do compute the path out of the nav mesh? Uh, no. but. I, I don't know how much time I have left. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, five minutes, that's enough. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, the, the basic idea is you, um, well, the, the biggest issue with finding your path through a nav mesh is that you don't know the actual cost of each node when you do the A star step. Um, or like, I'm not sure what your question is. Is your question how to find the correct nodes in the graph, or is your question how to like generate the path if you already know the pull nodes? The path. Oh, okay. Um, then just look up the simple stupid funnel algorithm. That's actually what it's called. Uh, the the basic idea is you kind of uh, you take the edge that you're going to go through, right? And you build a funnel. That's kind of awkward to do with a microphone. Like you build a funnel, and then you see how far you can go w with like the next edge. So if there's an, a smaller edge here, then I reduce this. And at some point, this is going to tip over the edge. And then you go back to the last node where you didn't go in that direction, because you know that you might be able to find a better path from there. And that gives you an optimal path if you already know the uh, the polygons. It's that's a really nice paper on it from 2011, something from. Also, there was a talk at GDC China, so really, really good question because that was annoying to implement. Um, okay, last question. Uh, yes, the gentleman. Uh, do you have doors or destructible uh, blocking objects in the game so that you have to um, block some of the pathfinding? And if so, how do you handle it with this nav mesh system? Um, we do have destructible objects. Mm -hmm. And the way I handle them is basically just recompute the nav mesh because like, the whole approach is that generating the nav mesh is fast enough that you don't notice it in the game. And we don't destroy many objects each frame. And like, I guess if we ran into, into performance issues with that, I would kind of queue it up. Like I would remember which objects were destroyed, or I would mark the thing as like recalculate that after the update of all objects. So if multiple things are destroyed, I don't calculate the nav mesh multiple times per frame. But it should be few and far between like where things get actually destroyed in a way that forces me to recalculate it. So I don't like I haven't paid that much thought on it really. But that's kind of what I think about it. OK, that is it from me, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you.